Hello and welcome to MCPSS Athletics. My name is Calvin Chris, Athletic Director for Mobile County Public Schools. Studio today we have from Theodore High School, Head Football Coach Eric Collier and Girls Soccer Coach Zach Coughlin. But first let's get to the scoreboard. These scores are from the area basketball tournaments this past weekend. In boys basketball, the floor dropped a close one to St. Paul, 61-59. Faith Academy defeated Vigor, 75-53. Williamson dropped a 40-38 decision to Spanish Fort. Centronelle closed out their season with a 53-32 loss to Sarahland. Theodore defeated Alma Bryant 77-47 to advance to their championship Monday and will host Baker. Ingham led the way with 18 points. Blunt dropped MGM 53-38. Harbin led the way with 12 points. Blunt plays McGill Tulin Monday for their championship. Murphy closed out their season with a 64-48 loss to McGill Tulin. In girls basketball, Viger upset LaFleur 40-38. Miss Craig pumped in 14 points. Viger will play Faith Monday for their championship. Davidson topped Baker 57-43 with Jackson leading the way with 29 points. Davidson will host Bryant Monday for their championship. Alma Bryant defeated Theodore 55-36. Collins led the way with 17 points. Bryant will travel to Davidson on Monday for the area championship. Johnson had 15 points to lead Blunt over MGM 62-5. Blunt hosts Murphy Monday for the area championship. And that is it for this week's scoreboard. After the, uh, this message, we'll be back with Eric Collier on our first segment. I'm Ashley Rich, Mobile County District Attorney. The failure to obey school bus safety laws will cost you. It can cost you up to a $3,000 fine and the loss of your driving privileges. But more than that, it can cost the life of a child. That's why the Mobile County Public School System is urging you to stop and obey all bus traffic laws. Hi, I'm Pat Mitchell, Director of Transportation for the Mobile County Public School System. We're asking you to obey all bus safety laws. It could save a life. Remember, stop ahead when you see red. Our future depends on it. For me, it started back in 1942 when my family moved to Mobile and I began my uh, high school career at Murphy High School. Today, it's so important to be able to ingrain in yourself what are you gonna do in future life, and you need to be prepared. And so subsequently, everything at Murphy was very important in my life, and so it, it was instrumental in preparing me for future life and future profession that I wanted to be in. <laughs> Sweetheart, can I give you a hand? No thanks, Dad. I got it. Okay. I'm gonna go fix the lamp in your room. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. I went to Murphy High School. In fact, to this day, my blood bleeds blue and gold. <laughs> to this day, some of my best friends are the high school football buddies that I had. Uh, we really had a wide array of classes available to us. All of my future relates back to the foundations that were given to me by the wonderful teachers and principals that I had uh, when I was a kid. Welcome back to the show. Our first segment today we have Coach Eric Collier, the football coach at Theodore High School. Coach, appreciate you coming on today. Thanks for having us on. Thanks. Coach, before we get started, you want to tell us a little bit about your career up to this point? Well, I graduated from Alba back in 1988. Um, went from there, went to Troy for three years, came back here to South, uh, finished up at South, got married and got four boys. Uh, from there, went, went to work for um, Coach Beck down at Alba High School. Uh, worked with Coach Billy Odom, uh, great guy, did a lot for me. Um, worked with Coach Probst down there. Uh, last 98, we put Alma Bryant together. Um, you know, 12 years there, uh, four years as head coach. Um, ended up coming up to Theodore in 07. Uh, been up there with Bill, one of my best friends. You know, the good thing about that is Bill and I went to college together, uh, played little league ball together. Um, Lord, he's, he's my best friend. Um, so it's really been good. You know, Bill stepped down a year ago and I took over and uh, things are going real well. 
Coach, you have worked for some excellent people. I know I work for Coach Beck, and of course, Coach Odom is the most organized person <laughs> there is. And Coach, Coach Propes is one of the best football minds mm -hmm. of, of any high school, college person. Mm -hmm. How have they molded you into, you know, how you come yeah. up with your philosophy? Well, I tell you, Coach, you know, I, I said all the time, it's, I've been blessed. A lot of times coaches have to move to, to see different things. I've been blessed. Um, where I've had different guys come into my life, and, and, and I've, I've pulled a little bit from each one of those guys. Example is Coach Odom, uh, one of the most organized guys I've been around in my life. And I learned a lot from him just from an athletic director standpoint and, and also uh, how to structure your program. You know, Coach Watson was my high school coach. Coach Watson was one of the most disciplined men I've been around Excellent, in my life. Yeah. And, and I look back now when I make decisions, a lot of times I look back and I think, you mm -hmm. know what, that's what Coach Watson would have done or he wouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Coach Beck, Coach Beck was a player's guy. You know, he was always going to make it fun. He made football fun. You, you enjoy going out there. And I try to do that, and I get that from him. You know, uh, Mark Lasseter, I was with Mark at, at Alma Bryant. Mark did a great job coming in behind Coach Probst. The uh, thing I get from Mark is Mark's probably the best athletic director I've ever worked with. Uh, he cared about all the sports. Boys, girls, it didn't matter. He, he really did. He, he was the best AD I'd, I'd ever, ever been with. Uh, Joe Nettles, great disciplinarian. Joe was always going to do what was right, um, and he always held, ki held kids accountable. And, and I, again, I reflect on him and Coach Watson mm -hmm. when it comes to discipline. Coach Probst, you know, the thing I think about all the time with Coach Probst is leave no stone unturned. Never leave no stone unturned. And, and, and I, I try to do that on a daily basis. Is first thing to do in the morning is get up and do that to-do list and don't mm -hmm. go to bed until it's done. Uh, and he was that way. And, and, and Coach Probst is also one of them guys who's going to burn the midnight oil. You're going to meet at 6.15, 6.30, and you're going, you're going to leave the office late. Uh, and I've changed a little bit from there, but, but that's the thing I got from him. And also, one of the other things I get from Coach Probst is you've got to take care of them young men. You, know? you can be hard on them if they know you love them. And they truly know when you love them and when sure. you're trying to, yeah. trying to pull the wool over their eyes. Um, when I pivot with, with, with Bill, you know, um, I work with Bill. And the thing, thing I got from Bill is, is, is this. There's a way, of the way, a way Theodore does things. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, is um, theater is a tough-nosed community, and we're always going to be a, a good physical ball team. Um, I work with David Faulkner, and David was down at Alma Bryant. X's and O's wise, David's probably one of the better guys I've ever been around. You know, David's great at scheming and, and all that type of things, and he kept me on my toes. So I, I've been blessed, you know, I've, I've been have. around a bunch of different guys. Um, defensively, I'll be honest with you, I work with a guy named Charles Sabatini who's down at Biloxi High School now, and things we do defensively. I get from him. Uh, so uh, a large blessing. He's been really good to me, and I've been fortunate enough to be around some really good ball coaches. You really have. Uh, Coach, the last couple of years has kind of been uh, challenging at Theodore. Uh, I, I was telling Miss Peake the other day, it runs in cycles. You know, you'll get a, a group of athletes three or four years there, then you'll get a couple of freshman classes, yeah. and, you know, you lose them, and then it winds up telling – yeah. Uh, you know, when you get 11th and, and 12th graders, you can talk a little bit about your past. This is your first season. At, first season, it, yeah. It, we, went, we, went, we, had, we had a four and six season. Uh, we won a couple. We probably shouldn't have and, and lost one or two. Mm -hmm. We probably should have won. Uh, it was an up and down season. Uh, I tell you why I was blessed, Coach. We had some fine young men, and I mean that. Um, I, I was blessed to have some good seniors who bought into things mm -hmm. we're doing, and, and that meant a lot to me. Uh, they, they're they're going to go on and, and play ball at the next level. But when you talk about our season, you know, again, we had some up and down seasons, uh, a up and down season. Um, we got a good group in the weight room now. They work in their butt off. You come to that field house at one o'clock, and you'll you'll see they work. They step to school and work. Um, and, and you talk about cycles. You know, you fight them cycles. But once you get your program where it needs to be, you know, and it, it'll take. We're almost there. But again, once you get that program where it needs to be, it, it, it's truly a program. And you don't fight those those up uphill battles and then downhill battles. You kind of level everything off, and you keep your kids rotating in and out. In other words, you want you want to have 25 to 28 seniors every year. You know where you get yourself in trouble is when you when you drop down to 15. Right. You drop down to 15, well, then you got a problem. And again, it goes back to to the number one thing I believe in is you gotta love them kids. Mm -hmm. And there's a place for every kid in that program. Every kid. You know, if if we carry 150, we need all 150. Because uh, that, that's important, especially when you start practice planning. When you get out on the practice field, and you start and you start start repping and, and doing things like that, you need bodies. Sure. And, and again, we need every kid in that program. 
no, no one's better than the other one. We tell them all the time, nobody is bigger than the program. You know, I'm not bigger than the program. Mr. Ryle's not. We're going to put Theodore High School first. But that's Coach, you want to talk a little bit about your uh, offense and your defense that you're going to uh, <clears throat> have this the coming year? We'll be multiple offensively. Uh, we'll work out of the pistol some. We'll get under center a little bit. Um, You'll you know, have a new quarterback, correct? Sure do. Chris Colburn's coming in, going to fight for the job. Um, but, but, again, Chris is going to be a junior, big old good-looking kid, great young man, uh, can throw the ball, runs it pretty good, uh, look for really good things out of him. You know, uh, you watch him throw it, and it's, it's funny. Everybody in this county will come up to me, and they already know Chris. Chris mm -hmm. hadn't played a Friday night game. But, again, people will come to me and, well, what about your quarterback? And he does a good job. He can throw it. Um, and, and, you know, we've got LaMichael Piran coming back. Piran was a sophomore this past year, and he's actually got a chance to be a special young man. He does. Uh, got some offensive linemen back. You know, we've got two or three kids that have been three-year starters. But, again, it goes back to what I talked about earlier is, is you know, try to get away from them cycles. Try to get into where you, you're maintaining your program, keeping those 25 to 20 right, kids. Right, right. You exactly right. Uh, defensively, you know, we'll be 4-3. We'll be I'll, I'll always be a 4-3 guy unless it's long down the distance. We'll play 3-3. Three, three. Uh, we got seven kids back on both sides of the ball. We got seven offense back, seven on defense back, and and you know we're looking for good things. You know we got some kids who make plays, right. um, and we actually started a few sophomores last year stepping in and made some plays. So that's always good. Yeah, it is. You know you want to see that. Coach, we'll have you back in the last segment. After this break, we'll have Coach Kaufman in. I transferred to Biger High School halfway through my sophomore year, and. Curriculum there, the instructors, teachers, uh, the whole thing was just a shock to me. Uh, at Viger, um, you were encouraged to critically think, and so uh, I was just uh, well grounded to move on into college football and then on into the NFL. Well, for me, Viger High School was the start. It's where I started, and I'm very proud of that. Nationwide, an average of 24 children die each year and another 17,000 are injured in bus-related accidents. Many of these can be prevented. The safety of our children comes first. For the safety of our future, obey all traffic laws related to school bus safety. Hi, I'm Pat Mitchell, Director of Transportation for the Mobile County Public School System. We're asking you to obey all bus safety laws. It could save a life. Remember, stop ahead when you see red. Our future depends on it. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Welcome back. This segment we have Coach Zach Kaufman, the girls' soccer coach from Theodore. Appreciate you coming back. Coach. Yes, sir. Appreciate you having me here. Coach, we'll talk a little bit about your uh, career. You're a young guy, so it's probably not a lot to tell, but you want to tell us a little bit about your career up to this point? <clears throat> yeah, um, this is my third year uh, coming in. So, actually, I, I do girls' soccer as well as I coach receivers for, for the football team, varsity. Um, went to South Alabama, graduated from there. I played for Coach Meredith. So when I got out of South Alabama, I, you know, I asked him, hey, you got any kind of openings? And he said, yeah, come on, man. Um, so I came over to um, Theodore, started off helping out with the freshmen. Um, then when I got in there, he said, hey, coach, you know, you're going to do girls soccer. So I played a little <laughs> bit of, of soccer in high school as well. Um, so I knew a little bit about it and kind of, you know, how to get started. But big change coaching girls, oh, going from football to, to coaching girls. But um, this is my third year, um, so and really enjoyed it. Really, I've enjoyed my, my tenure there so far. Now, how many years have you done soccer? This is my third year of yeah, soccer. Third year well. of soccer. Okay, yes. well, that's good. Going into the third uh, season. Girls' <clears throat> athletics has come so far. I, I was, I'm a dinosaur, but I, I knew when it first started, and it was uh, like basketball. Basketball, I, I counted one night at a basketball game. This was the first, second year. It was like, 41 jump balls, and, and girls' athletics has come so far. Yeah. These girls play like boys, don't they? I mean, they really. Oh, they, they do. They do. Uh, they, uh, y you know, you, you watch a boys game, watch a girls game, and, and you know, it's uh, it's all, they're all competing, and that's what you want is competing. Uh, t 
Tell us a little bit about your team this year, Coach. Okay, um, I've got a lot of returning starters on my team. We've kind of struggled over the last two years, just, you know, me coming in as a new coach. And the girls have unfortunately had a bunch of different coaches over right, the years, right. so they haven't had any continuity or longevity with their coaches. So coming in, them understanding what I expect out of them, um, they work really hard. I mean, I don't have to tell them to do anything over the summer. They're up there by themselves. Um, I've got a few girls that are really have stepped into that leadership role. Um, so the team should be able to compete, I feel like, for our region this year. Um, we have, I believe, Bryant, Baker, and um, Davidson. So I, that's really my expectations and my goal is for us to be able to compete and get into a playoff spot. Um, I'm really, really athletic, uh, a lot of speed. The only downside to, to the Theodore program is when the girls come, it's usually their first time playing soccer. Exactly. You know, and they get in as a freshman. So luckily and fortunately, we do have a JV program now, so we can build that. Right. Um, you know, I believe in the past you've had to go out and find people to play. Right. You know, so this year we had 40 try out, which oh, was great. great. Yeah. You know, a great thing. And so you can choose from, from different athletes and so. I think we're kind of a disadvantage in that uh, a lot of systems have middle school soccer teams and uh, you know even the parochial schools they'll start down real early. I, I think we're just kind of catching up with the soccer fad yes. because uh, I think this area has been behind for a long time. Uh, have you been able to play anybody else outside the county, anybody from uh, the Montgomery or anywhere and the reason I ask is there's a lot of in, in talking to soccer coaches there's a big difference yeah uh, huge difference I have not had to play um, or had the fortune to play any team outside the county um, yeah hopefully we can eventually get to that get the playoffs and then you can get there, yeah right? exactly exactly <laughs> maybe build a little bit of confidence right, right now right. Um, that's that's my main goal play teams that that are you know closer in competition to us get confidence in the girls um, that, that, I really feel like once they do get that confidence that they'll be able to start getting some victories mm -hmm. and, and competing. But, you know, it's just it's been kind of down a little bit. So they just you got to get them into believing they can win. Right. I don't believe there's any youth soccer. Maybe I think uh, one of the churches has a, a yes, soccer team, uh -huh. but uh, it's not big like it is in some areas. Right. And, and not in our area. Right. You know, I do believe there's a, a few parks that are trying to get soccer going, which would be good. Um, to get more people, you know, acclimated to soccer, to learn the basic skills of dribbling and, and things mm -hmm. that, you know, as far as, let's say, baseball, football, you know, when you get your kids in, they know how to do that kind of right, stuff already. Right. But in soccer, we're teaching them, okay, how you're supposed to dribble, how you're supposed to shoot, what the position is, what, you know, what the rules are, just basic things that I feel like other schools can kind of bypass because mm -hmm. they've had these leagues. Um, so that, that's a disadvantage for us right now, but hopefully we can get that going and um, start a successful program from the bottom up because that's really how you build a program. Now, Coach, uh, I don't know a lot about soccer. Uh, I know that uh, sometimes it looks like they're just running around out there, but, <laughs> but, but what kind of offense do you try to work with your girls? Okay, um, we run what you call a 4-4-2. You have four defenders in the back. Um, you have four midfielders and you have two players up front that are usually some of your faster players um, that can score for you. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's keeping the defense spread out. Now, we necessarily don't have set plays because you, know, you don't have timeouts and stuff right, in soccer. Right. I can't call a timeout. But um, just it's things that you practice, trying to stay spread out. And you, what, you, what you have is you have triangles that you mm -hmm. try to build, um, opening up passing lanes. It's honestly a lot like you know basketball or football. Um, and offensively, you know, just try to, uh, again, keep the, the ball spread out, keep the defense spread out. Um, and defensively, we play zone. Okay, so you, you have your zone, just like a 2-3 a or something like that you would play in basketball or 3-2. Um, and the main thing is just getting them, you know, not to run out of their zone, right. okay, leaving spots open. So, Coach, I've asked a lot of people, I think you just explained it just as simple as even I can understand. So that, that, that's great. Uh, are you able to do anything in the off season with them? Uh, I know um, you're involved with football, and uh, do you have them for varsity athletics or? Um, no, I do not have them for varsity athletics. But <clears throat> we do starting, um, you know, whenever football gets over with, right. y'all you know, have them come up in condition, things like that. Now during the summer, the girls, you know, I stay in touch with them. 
and and they do a good job of coming up there themselves you know and doing stuff themselves right. you know without me having to to be on them or coaching them and you know so that that's really helped out as far as conditioning but now i do know other schools they're kind of you know year-round type deal yeah, exactly but um yeah we, we 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 don't have that advantage right now but but the girls try to do it you know and that's really what i've been proud of with mine they have the discipline to do things that without me lot. having to stand over their back the entire that time. That says a lot. So. Okay, Coach, we're going to bring Coach Collier back in just a second. After this break, we'll be back. It started for me when I went into the first grade, and then I went on to George Hall Elementary School, and from there to Williamson, where I graduated. The public school system, it had a great impact on me because not only did it prepare me academically for my future career, but it also prepared me for life. Because of its diversity of, of students and teachers, it really gave me a well-rounded education. So, Nicholas, how was your day at school today? It was great. We had fun in class today. So what did you do differently today at school? I mean, anything, any new projects? We got a progress report today. You got your progress reports today? So how did you do? Uh, don't know. You don't know. That's okay. We can check that right here. Wow. Nicholas. This is my computer. This is your computer. Let's go on the internet. Let's go. Click it. Yes. Okay. I cursor in between the R and the E. Basically done. I want you to just push the period. She's going to love me all over again now. That's it. Jamaica, here you go. Here we go. <laughs> Good right. job. Thank you. Thank you. And I did it by myself. Feel smarter. Welcome back. We've got Coach Collier, Coach Coppin from Theodore High School. Uh, one que first question I want to ask y'all is, what is it like being at a community school? And a lot of people don't understand there's a big difference in a community school and maybe one that's serving a couple districts. So, yeah. Coach I, Collier? It's amazing. I, I'll be honest with you, Coach. I, I've been blessed. I've been to community schools all my life. Um, and I'll tell you the difference. When you walk in the store, and you run across that mom, you know that mom, mm -hmm. and you can speak to her and you can talk to her about her child because you know that child. Um, when you go to church, you go to church with folks that uh, are sitting in your boost club meetings, things like that. So, so it's good. Um, I've enjoyed it. I really have. Coach Kaufman, uh, we talked a little bit about your uh, soccer programs. Do you think you might have somebody that maybe could uh, going to get a scholarship, or is it too early to tell? Um, I know you open up today. Yeah, we do. We have our first game tonight. It, it is kind of early. Again, mm -hmm. we don't get a lot of recognition down right. here. You know, a few girls. I have a few girls that are really athletic um, that may have a chance to go to a smaller school possibly. Right. Um, so you know, that's just, again, it, it is kind of early to tell. But, you know, as we, as, we, as we move forward, maybe they can kind of step it up a right. little bit. But as far as speed and, and things like that, they look very good and they're very athletic looking girls. So. You know, I run across coaches all the time, and a lot of times we emphasize the big schools, but, you know, free money's free money, whether it's at yeah. junior college yeah. in oh, Mississippi yeah. or at the University of Auburn, Alabama. So, uh, and I know that's what the parents yeah. are, are thinking, and, uh, and uh, hopefully you will have someone. Coach, you want to talk a little bit about your signing day? We had it last yes, Wednesday. Sir. You had a yes, pretty good group. We were blessed. You know, Jerry Gibson signed without Minnesota. Uh, South Carolina came in on him. Um, Recruited him hard last month, but again, he stuck with his commitment to Minnesota, signed there. Jamie will go to play at Alabama. Um, Jamie was fortunate enough to get some leadership money and some, some academic money, so he'll go play at Alabama, follow his brother. Um, Josh Gaynos uh, committed to uh, Birmingham Southern, um, and then Coley McCollman and uh, Tyree, Law, Tyree Sullivan <coughs> will go to Concordia. Uh, so we're blessed there. You know, we have five kids, but I, I'll be honest with you, Coach, probably the one that, that's near and dear to my heart is Donald. You know, Donald Nelson had some opportunities to go play ball elsewhere. Uh, but Donald's family is military. And, and Donald decided, you know, he wanted to go, go join the military. And that's, that's important. That, yes. and, and, you know, he needs to be rewarded for that. I mean, over, you know, that's a big challenge. I know this. If I talk to my wife about that, I don't know if she'd want my child doing it. But I, I do appreciate that out of, out of him because uh, he's serving our, our you know, country. 
you know, at 18, you go in the military, say you do 20 years, you retire, you're 38, you've learned a trade, and, and, and people will hire See you, you know, yeah. with, with the trade yeah. out of the military. So, I mean, it's, it's a great yeah. way, especially if you're looking yeah. that far away for retirement and all. So, uh, Coach Kaufman, who do you have uh, helping you with uh, your soccer this year? Um, well, I have, we do now have fortunate, or been fortunate enough to get a JV supplement right. to have JV um, coaches. So I have Coach McGuff, he does our boys. His wife, Miss McGuff, is doing our, our JV right. soccer program, which is, again, very helpful. Sure. Um, last year, I, you know, <laughs> of course, when I, when I did it, I thought, uh, okay, I may be able to handle this, but <laughs> I tried to do varsity and junior varsity, and it, that didn't work out very work. well. You know, it's just impossible to have the time to, to do both of them. But um, we do have the, the varsity and JV, and, and that helps out a, a tremendous amount. This is the first year that we've had the JV supplement, and uh, uh, it was brought up every year. I, I think if you add it up, soccer may be the second leading uh, sport for participants in our county. You know, uh, it's just growing by leaps and bounds. Coach, can I say something about that? Sure. He, uh, it, you know, a lot of times our, our coaches go un, unnoticed. Coach worked both of those teams last year with a mm -hmm. lot of kids. And coached football and, and, and taught three classes. So he worked his butt off. And, and there's a lot of days he was running around like a chicken with his head cut off. But, you know, he did it because, because our kids. He, he knew right. this. The only way to build a program is, sure, is to start exactly. lower, lower level kids. Exactly. And I appreciate it out of him. So you, pretty much you didn't have a life last year, is what he's trying to say, Coach. <laughs> oh, I love it, Coach. That is my <laughs> life. That, that, that is, is my that life. Is. Uh, so, trying to spend time with the family. <laughs> That's what I got to get a little <laughs> yeah, better at. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we've got two minutes left, Coach. You don't talk about what you're doing in the off season. I know we uh, went down the other day and you was working out during the yeah. mini block and all, but, yeah. but what, what you're doing in the We're off working season? the fire at them, Coach. We're going to work out four days a week. Now, middle of this, this month, we'll start going out two days a week and doing some, some outside conditioning stuff. But I'll be honest with you, you know, going into this year, I want to make sure we spent some time in the weight room. Um, and we've done that, and, and, and we've been blessed to where we've seen our kids make some big gains. Um, so, you know, you look and you see that kid come in. At a, I was talking about it the other day, that signing day. Jerry Gibson comes in. Jerry's 135, 140 pound freshman. You look at him now, he's 210, 215 Dude, pounds. Yeah. So, you know, what we're doing is working. You know, I look at our kids, and they're, and they're putting on 15, 20 pounds of muscle. So it, it, we're blessed because I, I told the kids today, uh, well, Friday. We don't have kids come in whining about going to weight room. They come in, they go to work, uh, and, and they enjoy it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a blessing. You know, I, I, I'll be honest with you. The biggest thing I love about Theodore is we have great young men, and I mean that. that they work their butts off. You don't, you don't have to deal with, with, with bad behavior. You don't. Uh, we're blessed there, uh, and, and we're looking for a good year. We really are. And I think that community puts a value on education, too, and that makes a difference. Absolutely. Until the parents put a value on education, then it, it's hard for the yep. kids to, to want to come to school and do things. And uh, I always say if you want to see, to me, to see a great school is to go in the afternoons mm -hmm. and see how many kids are still at school. And springtime is mm -hmm. one of my favorite times because you've got tennis going right. on. Uh, oh. you, you got softball, you know huh? softball. You got baseball, and you know you just got a, a thousand things going on. And, and I really, I really appreciate that from from our schools. Appreciate y'all coming today. Best of luck, Thank and you very uh, much. and hopefully you'll have a great season, make the yes, playoff. Sir. Thank you, coach. Thank you, coach. This is Calvin, Chris, and to next week. Appreciate you watching. Coach.